So good morning and welcome to this class. We thank God that we are still alive this day and God has protected us from the coronavirus pandemic and we bless his holy name. I will not stop telling that Jesus needs you or you even need him more. The time is now to come to him and confess your sins and surely he will forgive you and he will reward you with eternal life. So last week we looked at uh, the demographic transition model and we realized that uh, when we were talking about this demographic transition model we said that this is a theory that tries to explain the transitions or the different stages that the populations of the world go through as they transition from one stage to another. We said we begin with a level where there is high fluctuating, so what we call stationary high birth rate, high death rate. We move to a stage where we have high birth rate, declining death rate. We move to a stage where we have declining birth rate, declining death rate. So all these ones do make up the demographic transition model. So this demographic transition model does explain how populations of the world transition from one to another. And therefore, when a country is realized that the population was exploding more so in the third stage of the model, they did decide to come up with policies that would help to contain the population explosion. Because remember, in the second stage and the third stage, this is where death rates tremendously drop, but then the birth rates remain high. So what countries did was to come up with control policies and one of these policies was family planning or what we refer to as contraception. So under family planning we are simply referring to the practice of controlling the number of children one has to produce and the intervals between birth, particularly by means of contraception or voluntary sensitization. It also means the practice of controlling the number of the growth of the family with the intentions of providing maximum support to all members of the family and the community at large. Therefore, under family planning, we have two types, two categories of contraception. There are those which are natural, but there are also those ones which are artificial. And these methods, of course, like we say, that their success depends on the sensitization that is offered to the population and their willingness to, to adopt. So family planning methods used to control population growth. One of them is the use of prolonged breastfeeding. This is a natural method. It does not involve any use, use of any chemicals. So what you do here is to breastfeed for, for, for as long as you can because it's assumed that the breastfeeding mother does not ovulate and therefore the chances of getting pregnant are very minimal if not zero. So breastfeeding mothers can also use this method to space their children because it means that when you're breastfeeding you're not going to conceive. And therefore what, what biologically we say that breastfeeding limits the calories in the body, then lactation depletes the body of fats and this therefore suppresses ovulation. And therefore breastfeeding is, is important because breast milk is the source of nutrients for infants as well as source of antibodies. So breastfeeding is one of them. However, not must be taken that breastfeeding as a method of contraception, as a method of family planning is only effective if you are on exclusive breastfeeding because there are mothers who breastfeed their children only in the morning and in the night. And therefore those ones cannot claim that the method will work for them since during the day they are away. That one is not exclusive breastfeeding. So if you make a mistake and you think that you're breastfeeding and therefore you, st you get sexually active again uh, three months or even less after delivery, you'll be shocked to find yourself pregnant. And here I'm talking to my daughters and sisters on, the, on this forum. Then there is the use of the intrauterine device, the IUD. This is prevents the embryo from attaching the uterine wall and therefore completing development. And therefore eventually controls the birth. It involves the placement of a coil 
this is what you people in vernacular you call a kaweta. It is inserted in the uterine and therefore prevents the implantation from taking place. There is also use of implants, number three, or the rubber implant containing low ladies of analog progesterone, a hormone in the bodies of women which prepares the body to become pregnant. These are inserted under the skin. It's the one which they usually insert here on the, on the, on the forearm, on the bicep somewhere here. They cut and insert it there. Then it keeps releasing a hormone into the body that prevents uh, pregnancy from occurring. Then the implant, then, but there's also we have the Depo Provera, which is an injection for it, which you keep receiving at a, give, at a given intervals. It's also the, the same the same hormone as the one released by implant, but only that the one of implant is permanently there. You can remove if you wish, but the the the, the, the one of injection you go there uh, periodically. And the implant use of implants and injections these are hormonal methods, but intrauterine device is non-hormonal, so is the use of prolonged breastfeeding. The fourth method is the male condom. This is one of the most mostly used. It's made out of rubber and I figure I don't need to explain much because I know you guys you have seen it. It's the most common. Even those of you who are not yet married, you have used it before. You have used it before and therefore more so those of you who are not born again who are not God fearing, you have used it before so you have seen this. Of course it prevents the, it, it is preferred because it's easy and relatively cheap. It prevents protection. It provides protection against STDs. It provides protection from STDs and also does not interfere with breastfeeding. But also we know, you know how it works. It just prevents the exchange of, of, of sperm and therefore there will be no fertilization of the egg in that case. Number five is the female condom. These are linings that fit loosely inside the woman's vagina, made of thin, transparent, soft plastic film, which forms which forms a barrier to prevent sperms and eggs from meeting. I know I don't know how many of you have ever encountered this, but I believe some of my daughters here have, have seen it. If you have not seen it, please take time. Uh, my daughters from Kavale, Kavachiga. You can find to get time go to the hospital and ask for female condom and look at it. Uh, my daughter is from Mukono. You can also go to the Mukono hospital there. The hospital they will give you free of charge. But I know some of you have seen them. As for my brothers, you, I know you have seen some of these things. I know it's not very common, but you can find out. It's, for it, it's just inserted in the in the woman's organ, uh, the productive organ to prevent the meeting of the egg and the sperm and therefore eventually fertilization will not take place. Fertilization will not take place in that case. Then number five we have the number six we have the diaphragm. It's a dome-shaped rubber that a woman places inside her reproductive organ before intercourse and it's meant to cover the cervix and therefore prevents the sperms from entering the womb. It's used in a combination with the spermicidal jelly cream which is good for people who don't have sex on a regular basis. So for those of you who don't have if you are in cover and your girlfriend in bad, you are good, you are good to go with the diaphragm. But if you are living in the same room with your girlfriend, like my brothers in bad, then for you the diaphragm may not be good since you may not have time to insert the diaphragm. Uh, you know what I mean. Number seven, we have the cervical cap. A soft rubber cap like, like a cap like device that fits properly around the base of the cervix to also prevent sperm from entering the womb so that the woman can get pregnant. You know very well that the cervix is a narrow passage to the opening of the woman's womb, 
So once that narrow passage is blocked <coughs> by a cervical cap, then the, the sperm will not be able to make its way to the uterus or the womb to cause fertilization. Eight is oral contraception or contraceptives. These are the ones we call pill plan, a hormonal method which prevents pregnancy by interfering with ovulation and fertilization. The pill contains the hormones, estrogen and the progestin, when it's taken daily to keep the ovaries from releasing an egg. It's taken daily. I know some of you are on, on a pill plan and you know what it takes to, to manage pill plan. It, it requires serious discipline. Because once you miss out one pill, that means you have distorted the whole cycle, you have to begin afresh. But that beginning afresh means that you must abstain for some days first. And then you begin taking the pills because you missed. And remember, you have to take it every day at the same time. So it requires serious discipline. There is also male sterilization or what we call a vasectomy. This is a permanent one. It's a permanent method of contraception. It blocks or cuts the vas difference tubes that carry sperms to the womb. Uh, you know very well that they will have tubes that carry sperms from the testes to that they, now, that they are now be able to be released during intercourse into the womb. So those tubes which carry the, the sperm from the test, testicles or the testes are the ones which are blocked. Eventually, you, you, are, you are able to have intercourse. I know some of you think that if you have, if you cut your, your, your tubes, if you, you, have, you undergo a vasectomy, you will not be able to have intercourse. Intercourse will continue, you will have it and you will even be able to ejaculate or to, to because, because there is semen which is produced within there. The only thing which will not be there will be the sperms. The sperms will be absent because the sperm that will be cut or will be blocked. On the other hand, among the women, or what we call female sterilization, also permanent, this one, this one involves what we call, it's also called tubal ligation. It is a permanent, it also involves the cutting of the fallopian tubes, or the, and they also to ensure that the eggs are blocked from meeting the sperm. It's a very common method among the women, because you know for us men sometimes we are very selfish, so we push our women to go and, and block their tubes, where for us we, we go scot-free. Number 10 is also a very common method. I know my brothers, Uboja, Joel, Kwairagala, Chebeti, and then my my wachiga there, you must have used some of this this one here, yeah, number ten, withdraw method. It's where the man withdraws from the partner's he withdraws his penis from the partner's vagina and the actually is outside, keeping the semen away so as to prevent fertilization. So what happens here that he, as you're enjoying your your your, your, your game and they realize that you are about to orgasm, you then you must withdraw. It's a method of people you sometimes call it the banker method because when you go to the bank at the ATM, you go to withdraw money. So here you must withdraw and make sure that the ejaculation takes place outside the vagina so that there is no so that there is no fertilization. Remember I'm using this these words are English words. Don't call me obscene. Vagina is an English word, so is a penis. Then number eleven is periodic abstinence. I know this one is also used. Although, but, but I must make, make a point here that the guys I'm teaching you about family planning, I'm not going, I'm not encouraging you to go and use it because for you as people who are not married. As who are married, we can do all those things. We, we can look for oral contraception, we can look for wisdom, we can do whatever we want because for us, God recognizes us. But for you, you are not married. So, and sex before marriage is sin. So, I'm not encouraging you guys but I know some of you, you may, you, 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 are, you may not be God-fearing and you are going, you are you're doing these things. So if you are not in the flock of God and you are doing these things, then you will choose one of these methods. It is going to help you to, uh, to prevent STDs, but it is also going to help you to prevent unwanted pregnancies. So periodic abstinence or fertility awareness method. This one is, involves, uh, sometimes people call it is standard days method or moon beats. 
I don't know whether you heard about the moon beads. Moon beads is a chain of, you know, these guys who are Catholics, they have a chain of beads around the string, which they keep counting as they are praying. So a moon bead is a chain, is a string. I know some Devaganda, it's a very common among Devaganda women, they have those beads around their waists. I hear it's, for, it's an aphrodisiac, I don't know how it works. Maybe Chizimula will tell me, and, and, uh, and Yahweh, uh, Patrick, you can also tell me if it's common among the Bagisu. You have a, a waist bead, we call them the waist beads. But in this case, the moon bead, these beads are colored according to to the, the your menstrual, the menstrual cycle of the of the woman. Where so where you find the red, it means that that red is a, is is a, those are what we call danger days. But it requires fertility awareness. That's why we call it a fertility awareness method. You must know that you if your cycle begins on day one of the month, January first, and you you are in two periods for five days, then you count fourteen days from the first day of your period to the 14th day between 12th and 16th you will find red beads there because those are days where conception is at its maximum so if you are the husband or if you are the boyfriend and you find that she's wearing the red beads are the ones which are the exactly pointing where the, the reproductive organ is the front then you know those are dangerous days and if you are part of the or you are you are a partner a good cup partner who is supportive you will know that any mistake here is going to bring about conception so you also avoid your woman during that period when you where you see the red beads unfortunately for some men this method here is quite difficult for men who go, who go for safari if you're a truck driver if you're a man who works up country it's quite difficult and some men also misbehave you will find that the woman is wearing her beads and they are indicating red what the man does is to push the beads and puts their green because green you know green indicates that you are free to go those of you who, who, who drive cars you know what it means yellow means that get ready prepare to move so yellow is still not safe because you're not supposed to move so those colors are there as a part of them but there are also those ones who don't use moon beads they're just they're just aware of their fertility they keep monitoring because this fertility awareness is a calendar method, a calendar based method where you have to keep monitoring your fertile days. Some, some women I hear they monitor using the discharge that comes out of their vagina. That that discharge monitoring the cervical mucus, what we call the cervical mucus, and the body temperature. Uh, here, when the temp when you are when you are when you when you on your heat, your temperature also increases, and a woman being on heat means that she is ready to conceive. She is ovulating, so she is ready to conceive. So you have to abstain during those fertile days to prevent it, pregnancy. Twelve is the combined oral contraceptives (COC). They are also pills. They work by stopping the woman's egg from ripening and becoming mature, and then being released. They, what they do, they thicken the mucus at the opening of the womb, making it very difficult for the sperms to reach the womb. A 13 is emergency contraceptive. These are also very common, especially among campuses like you. Yeah. Emergency pill, what you call emergency pill. Some people call them morning after pill. Yeah, where if things happened last night, you know, because some of you younger people, you are too active. So you you, you want to, to, to wait for another day. So you people things happen and then you say hey, then the morning you are there getting worried after it happened where well, you all away so you rush to the pharmacy to go and look for an emergency pill it's a pill containing progestin alone and estrogen together like the natural hormones in a woman's body they are taken as soon as after having unprotected sex to prevent pregnancy some of them have a, an allowance of up to 72 hours others have a lesser allowance than that However, the day of which has got side effects, so it's not highly advised that you you become addicted to emergency pills. We have the copper bearing intrauterine device. It's placed in a woman's uterus through the vagina, and it damages the eggs and the sperms before before they meet. So here I said that students, you research about the advantages and the disadvantages of each of those family planning methods. Of course, each of them has got its own advantages and disadvantages. 
I have told you, for example, the fertility awareness method is uh, natural. So there is no hormone. For those of you who are worried of getting fat, you will not get fat. Uh, those of you who are worried of, of you are, for example, you may be irritated by use of condoms. This one will not irritate you. But the problem happens. This one is good if you have a stay in a husband or the wife. If you stay in the same place seven days a week. But if the husband travels, he will come back on the day when you are in red days. And if for him, he cannot wait because to wait for green because you will be traveling away again. And even you yourself, you may not be ready to wait. So that one becomes a problem. Wisdom method is also quite difficult. Those of you who have used it, you can attest to it. It's quite difficult. I must confess I have used it before, but it's quite difficult. You are always not sure whether something is escaped before you could, you could jump the, the ship. So it's also quite difficult. The intrauterine device, the insertion, I hear I've heard about stories how the, the insertion is quite uh, painful because they insert there using some some instrument, some metal, I don't know the metal syringe, so it's quite difficult. Uh, I've also had a scenario of, of a woman where the, 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 that device disappeared within her body, so, but though, though, though they are quite minimal because actually the IUD's peak is gaining prominence these days due to its uh, its friendliness as far as uh, because it's not a hormone first of all does not bring about gaining weight and the like these other ones peel plan injector plan implant all those ones are hormonal methods so there is associated with weight gain or weight loss and sometimes changing the whole body you know we've heard of women who bleed for 12 years for 12 months throughout without stopping the problem being those hormones associated with use of family family planning. Condoms, you know the advantages. It's cheap, you can and the rates are available anyway. If you move out of your hostel right now, it could be even at your reception, depending on the kind of hostel you are staying in. Uh, except for the female condom, which is quite uh, quite rare, but the male condom is already available. The advantages of family planning. Family planning helps the mother to have or to live a strain or stress-free life and a healthy body. You know, one of the reasons women, breastfeeding mothers, gain weight, or mothers on, 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 on family contraception gain weight during that time is because of the, the, the stress-free life they are living. Sometimes it's not the hormones from the, from the, from the, the contraceptives, but it's the, the stress-free life they are living. Because they are free, they are not stressed. You know, you know, those of you who are, I know some of you could be mothers, some of you are sexually active, you are in relationships. You know the stress you feel the following day after knowing that you are not sure whether you are the papa, you are in two years, safe days or not yet. So, but when you are on contraception, you can do it anytime you want because you know there is no risk of getting pregnant. So you, you are free. It also helps parents to be able to meet financial costs effectively. The reason as to why we limit family size these days is to be able to provide better education and good medical care and good nutrition and shelter and clothing, among others, to our uh, our children. Family planning encourages healthy sexual behaviors between couples in relation to preparation for pregnancy. Couples who are not in monogamy monogamy relationships can use birth control methods to reduce on the likelihood of pregnancy outside marriage. Those of you who, who, want, who are cheating on your partners, eh, contraception can help you to, to prevent con conception outside marriage. It also reduces on the risk of contracting sexually transmitted diseases. That's the, that's the beauty with, 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 with condom, use of condom, both female and male condom. For them, they prevent STDs as well. It's not only just preventing the pregnancy, you prevent the pregnancy, you prevent the STIs. It also reduces, number five, it reduces the risk of unwanted pregnancies among women. You know, that, that boyfriend of yours can be as sweet as, as, as a honey for as long as you don't conceive. But the moment you tell him that you, you, you missed your period, that's when you will disappear. Because men fear pregnancies as if they are the ones who even carry them. Why do you fear pregnancies, you boys? You know, you are not the ones who carry them. Eh? 
but they fear because you know it comes with consequences. There are also couples living, um, women living with HIV AIDS. This one also can help them to reduce you can so, so that you are able to, to 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 have a sexual active life, but then you are not you are not you are not going to infect your babies. You are not going to infect your orphans. Family planning reduces adolescent pregnancies, which may result in too low weight babies and school dropouts. Yeah, unfortunately, among the school going children like you guys, you have ditched the condom. You don't want to use a condom. Yeah. If there is anybody who loves a condom among the students here, please confess during the interactive session, and I will recommend you. I will give you a step. But most of you have ditched it, and you have even developed a long mentality that that HIV doesn't kill. You just you fear pregnancy more than HIV. So people have ditched the condom. You said it irritates you. It does all so many things, and therefore you are living very unhealthy sex, sexual lives. It reduces on the mat on maternal mortality because it reduces on unwanted pregnancy. You know, unwanted pregnancies are one of the highest causes of maternal mortality. You know how many girls are dying every day because they are trying to abort an unwanted pregnant pregnancy. How many girls are dying every day because they are trying to give birth to babies, but they are not re yet ready as, as the women, their bodies are not yet ready. Eight, it helps to slow down population growth and it helps resources to be kept or preserved for the future generation. Yeah, so you keep down. Yeah. Some of if your father had produced fewer fewer of you, you would be able to preserve that, that some of that land for the future generation. But your father produced many of you, like Joel, 18, others are 24, others. Uh, where girl, how many are you? you? I know you people, the Walangira clan, you like producing so many. You could be even 30 or 35. Family planning is, is, the, well, is, is also part of the welfare of the whole nation because it results in economic development of, of the country. The reason as to why countries of the world came up with policies to encourage family planning was to be able to bring about increased per capita income which eventually will, will, st will st stimulate economic growth it also empowers people and, em and embraces education yeah, a, a woman on family planning on contraception contraception has helped it empowers women that the women now are able to make choices because she knows if for you you're not willing to use a condom she has a female condom which she can insert if for you are not willing to, to use contraception, she will swallow an, an emergency pill. That's why these days they say women only conceive. It's only women who want to conceive who conceive these days. Because if you don't want to conceive, they are, I told you there are pills which work even after after 72 hours. It was about three days. So if you had sex on Friday, you can swallow a pill today and it will kill the sperm in your body. And therefore you will not be able to even to conceive. So that's the empowerment I'm talking about. Problems of using family planning are all challenges to its implementation. There are several. Some of the contraceptions, contraceptives are cons costly, and therefore most women cannot apply. For example, the IUD and the rubber implants. You need money for it to be inserted. So in that case, not not many women can afford the IUD and the rubber implants and others. Even something as cheap as a condom. These days, I think a pect or condom goes for 1,000 shillings. For your campuses, you know what is how 1,000 can buy for you. 1,000 is a horror supper for you because that is the command of two chapatis and you will be done. So to spend your 1,000 to go and buy three, three packs, three, a pack of three condoms to be used in one night, uh, some people will say no. There are those who have contracted HIV because they could not afford that 1,000 shillings. To go and buy a pack of condoms. But the fortunate thing about condoms is that they are free in the health centers. You can walk into any health center of your choice and pick. They are even found in some of these guest houses, in the dispensers, where you can just pick for free. Unfortunately, some of you are even shy to go to your shop to go and buy a condom. There is also limited funding from the respective governments and donor agencies. There is also cultural conservativeness. Some of you are just culturally conservative. Where you still attach a lot of value to many children and material wealth, that you, the more children you produce, the more wealth you get, the more respect you get in the in your, among your, your comrades, that the more children you have, the more labor you get. That is conservativeness. 
There's also opposition from religious groups, for example, the Muslims, they love their polygamy so much, the Catholic Church condemns all non-traditional family planning methods. The Catholic Church only, uh, you remember even Malthus was only talking about abstinence and the, and the, and the prolonged breastfeeding. Those are the ones for them they look at. Those ones which are non-traditional, they don't want to encourage them. There is also shortage of contraceptives in the third world because we don't manufacture these. Some most of the countries do not manufacture these. They are imported. So there is a problem. Ignorance about the existence. Ignorance, this one is everywhere. Even you, some of you are very ignorant. Because if I ask if you have ever seen an IUD, you will not tell me so. And if I ask if you have ever seen an implant, you will you, you not, you not tell me. To the extent that there are some of you here who have never been seen a male condom. For my daughters and sons who are still virgins, because I, I assume you've not seen a condom. If you, where did you see it from? You saw, or you played with it when you were little children as balloons, maybe. But that there's that ignorance. Some people are not even aware that. So there are these ones who will say family planning is very bad, but they are not aware that actually we have safer methods of family planning, which can work very well. There is also fear of the side effects. This is one of the very common challenges. Women don't like gaining weight. People don't want to lose weight. That day there is a headache. That day is dizziness. There is this. More so associated with pills. Breastfeeding, the pills even bring, uh, interfere with breastfeeding because they dry up the, 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 the breasts. So women are not able to breastfeed their children, their babies sufficiently. Gender disparities in that as much as women want few children, the men continue to demand for more. This, is a, this comes as a result of failure to agree where the man wants more, many children. Oh, but these days actually the equation has changed. Men want fewer children than women. Women want to produce a lot of children. You tell a young man, I want two children, he says, me, I want five. That for many children are a source of joy. So that becomes a problem in a family. There's low education levels. This limits the power to make a decision and also leads to lack of knowledge. On different family planning methods. And the liability of some of the methods, e.g., withdraw and condoms, condoms sometimes burst. And there was also a problem, there's a recent, last year, I think it was last year or the other year when there was this issue of the lifeguard condoms which were said they were faulty. So it caused it, it has now caused the bias among the people. Those of you who is do, we know what, how, how, how problematic it, it can be. Negative attitude of people towards family planning methods. Yeah, people have a negative attitude. They think these things are there to cause them problems and do this and that. And then they need to change the sex of children also limits people to go in for family planning. Some people produce so many children because they are looking for a chance to change the sex of the children. The possible strategies to, uh, to emphasize the use of family planning, better coordination among donors and governments, sensitization of the masses, provision of services free of charge, use of population control policies, and then improving on the science and technology as well as research so as to deal with the side effects of some of the methods. And questions and, and queries can be asked during the interactive session. God bless you.